I mean, it seems to me that as Anglicans, at our best, we cluster around the scriptures and the Catholic creeds, the sacraments, the orders of ministry, um, and then the whole thing is pretty unruly beyond that. Um, the question is... And, it, and it, it forms a sort of centre of gravity, and over time, mm -hmm. um, developments that are of God flourish, ones that are born of human ambition Indeed. tend to wither away, which is exactly, it sorts itself out. You know. Which is exactly what the process of reception at its best yeah, is. Yeah. But I see very little evidence that the process of reception is taken seriously. Can you just explain for, for, for sort of people okay. who are not familiar well, with the The process the of reception is, it is a humble admission that because the whole church is not sure that this is the right thing to do, whatever we do is provisional. Hmm. And there must be the possibility that we might be wrong. Um, you see, your sort of holy hesitancy, you're saying, um, uh, uh, what God, how do we know exactly what God wants and so forth, um, has to be uh, um, a humility that's brought by all parties to the, to the idea. I would say that the sort of legislation that's being proposed takes away the notion of, of reception. By basically saying, we will tolerate those who cannot see that this is right to a sort of provision for them till death is to close down the notion of reception within our own community. Mm -hmm. If I cannot say I'm unsure about, about the ordination of women and have an honored place in this church, an honored place to flourish and share my views and grow new Christians who also believe that view, mm -hmm then the process of reception has been closed down by our church. And if people can't accept that, that notion of reception with humility, as I must accept that I may be wrong, and do, mm. then there's an arrogance there that needs to be named. Uh, and I say that with respect, but to say uh, it, it, we are right and everyone must accept and act like we are absolutely right and we must create a structure which doesn't allow for the possibility of people to dissent mm -hmm. and wonder is an arrogant claim. So what is the structure that's on the table now? I mean, we're, we're almost at the end of the process of sorting it out, aren't we? So it's, it's more than a proposal, really, but... Well, it's legislation, and there can be amendments put, and we know now that the two archbishops are attempting to put an amendment, uh, which is uh, uh, gracious, but for goodness sake, we've had this legislation going on com in committee, and as far as I'm concerned, um, those those sorts of views should have been put into the process. Mm. Because the problem with amendments is that everyone reacts to them rather than reflects about them. Mm. Um, however good they are, and you can read the reaction to them, you know, uh, in the church press and no doubt endlessly on blogs. The legislation uh, allows for the ordination of women as bishops and a code of practice for the care of those who, who are opposed, but it withdraws the Act of Synod and the possibility of parishes. What did the Act of Synod establish? The, the Act of Synod established the possibility of a parish um, uh, passing resolutions that could say it, wouldn't, it did not wish to, to have a woman, woman incumbent or a woman celebrating the Eucharist and ask for a care of a bishop who held those views. Um, uh, that's all swept away. And uh, as far as I can see, according to the legislation, it creates um, a hospice care movement. Uh, if you read that legislation, how could there be, in the long term, ordination candidates opposed to ordination women? How could there be bishops opposed to ordination women, aside from ones to care for those who are opposed to ordination women? Right. So what would you have liked to have seen? There are models of, of episcopal care that, that aren't geographic. Okay, like the bishop for the armed forces. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Do they have a strong precedent in historic Catholic Christianity? Well, I think we're... Uh, well, historic Catholic Christianity, I'm not a church historian, but it's much messier. One of the things I learned from Eric Kemp was the messiness of the mm. historic church. I think the jurisdiction, actually, 
jurisdiction is primarily a jurisdiction of love in the Catholic Church. And uh, uh, people have the right, and I don't use that word, a right to have a bishop who will love them equally. Okay, we may get very frustrated with one bishop. I said, well, of course, Lindsay, this is not a problem in my diocese. I said, no, because you've made them all leave. You don't have traditionalist priests because they've all left. Why have they left? Because they do not feel equally loved. And a bishop is the first lover of souls. And any good leadership knows that if you don't love equally, you bring out the worst in your troops. Mm. And priests naturally want to be loved and to love their bishop, however ambiguous the relationship. There's a deep wound in the soul of a priest if he does not believe his bishop loves him mm. and honors him. And the major fault for that, however unloving the priest is, rests with the bishop. Because on the day of judgment, the bishop will answer for the care of those whom God has ordained, or he has ordained in the name of God. Mm. I feel that very passionately, and it's, I've listened to bishops, you know, I've been going to the College of Bishops meeting for 16 years, and uh, there's some very beautiful and wonderful brethren in that body, but there's been a lack of love, and if it's not the bishop, he sends his henchman archdeacon in. Mm. You know, I've never spoken like this before, because I always, as Bishop of Horsham, took the Arenic line, but I've now spoken to too many broken brethren. Mm to just say it can't be true. And when people say people must trust a code of practice with the ordination of women as bishops, uh, I'm afraid, I'm afraid it's a big ask. Because where's the, you know, it's natural for me to say, if you say trust me, I need some evidence that I can, surely. You have to demonstrate yeah. that you're trustworthy. And I just don't see that evidence. I really don't. I, I'm not talking about the Archbishop of Canterbury, actually. Uh, at all, mm. and I'm not talking about every bishop. But um, these are. I'm, the, I'm, 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 I hate saying. I'm, this. I'm interested in what this must be, what it must be like spiritually to bear this, because you are an acknowledged leader of this movement. Um, you were in a traditionalist diocese before. And no, I was in a diocese with traditionalist bishops. Well, okay, but a diocese <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, okay, yeah, okay, within okay. The, within the church yes. economy is acknowledged as one of the places where traditionalists, relatively speaking, could thrive and were. You know, we're, mm. we're, 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 we're kind of in a, in a strong position. Three minutes. Three minutes. Walsingham obviously is, you know, mm. a place people look to for um, leadership as well. Um, I think if I was in your situation, I would be so consumed <laughs> with resentment. Oh, no, no, no. Rage. No, I'm not. I don't <laughs> have it. Be no, to I think it's very important. I, I have neither resentment nor rage. How come? I don't know, I just don't. <laughs> Maybe I'm a realistic ostrich like my mother. I don't have resentment or rage. Yeah. And I, I don't have... Uh, I am committed to try and love equally every person who comes to this shrine, believing that God has sent them. That's no virtue, I just that's my, yeah. the, my vocation. And it's the vocation I would call every priest to. So I must seek to live it myself. So, so it's not... Um, no, I'm not consumed with rage at all. I don't, I don't have any rage. God is God. And... Um, Jesus has not fallen off his throne. Mary is still his holy mother. Mm. And um, what do you think you'll do personally when the first woman bishop appears on the TV screen? No idea. No idea. No idea at this particular junction. No idea. So it's no good me pretending that I know. Mm. Um, I'm not. A, I don't believe in making hostages to fortune. It's no good me saying. I don't even know what I'm doing tomorrow. <laughs> I have to look at my diary. <laughs> so, but I think it's and I think it's very important that um, traditions don't throw down gauntlets. Mm. So if you do this, then I'm doing this. Yeah. On the other hand, it's important for people to know how seriously people take this. Mm. This is not just a political game. We're dealing with trying to work out what God wants, and I I accept fully that good Christian people have come to different conclusions. What I do ask about church is to make a space where people like myself can have at least the opportunity to flourish and grow and be faithful. Mm.